Oh yeah, even out here in the woods, got coffee. All right guys, welcome back, Survival Living here. So for my birthday, I wanted to take you out here and teach you some outdoor survival, hypothermia survival skills, some training. Unfortunately, it's 71 degrees. Yeah, I know. Uh, I try to live what we preach, I try to show you that we can learn from actually seeing the process done. Unfortunately, with the weather being it is, and it's January 5th, I'm in Northwest Florida, and it's unusually warm, it'll be a complete BS. So, I won't be able to get myself in a hypothermic state, even if I submerge my, myself in the river for several hours. It, it's just going to take forever. To go in hypothermia, your core temperature has to drop down below 95 degrees. That is the first stage of hypothermic. So, I wouldn't actually be able to achieve real hypothermia for the training video with the water temperature the way it is. It's too warm. I'd be in there for hours. And it's uh, 1.15 now, and it starts getting dark about 4.30. So, I got here a little late. Uh, one of my wife's rabbits is going to the veterinarian today. He has some issues, so she took him out there, uh, so I got to camp late. I did get base camp set up. We'll tour that tonight. Base camp was going to be a fallback for me. Basically, if I screw up, I had a place with gear to sustain my life and get me warm back up if I messed up in the hypothermic training. Well, it's my birthday, so we're just going to be camping tonight. So, with hypothermia survival, guys... I wish I was in a cold environment so I can show you I've lived it, but I like to show you what we do. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a mocked up version for you. And I'm going to show you exactly what I would have done, minus stripping, of course. Uh, but I actually, the only thing I was going to take with me during this whole exercise was a rain poncho. And the reason I was going to do the rain poncho so you didn't have a complete blur of everything, at least I could function, show you everything. Um, you know, if I'm wearing a rain poncho, it's not censored, right? But, fortunately for y'all, you'll miss that on that one, right? Um, and that was it. That's the only skill I was going to get. I have a knife on me, but I wasn't even going to be able to use this. I will be showing you what I am going to do down there. So, of course, with hypothermia, you need to get your body warm. Fire. Well, how are you going to get fire going without a knife? Uh, well, we're going to cover that in this video. All right, guys, stick around. We'll jump down there, and we'll go over everything. So what we're trying to do is get our spindle. We've got a rock here. We're trying to get our spindle worked out for a bow drill. Of course, if you're soaked to the bone, you'll be shivering like crazy. And we've been out here for almost an hour trying to get this thing ground down nice. Enough for it to work. And if there is moisture on it, it'll be okay because once you start your spindle in action, it'll dry out your wood. So we also got to get a board, we got to split it, and try to make it work. Well, that's a bust. I haven't been out here in this location in about six months. And underneath this tree, the location I was going to be doing this film work at is now a campsite. A legitimate campsite by the state. Yeah. That sucks because uh, that changes a lot of stuff for my business as well because out here I get permits to run my classes. And I haven't applied for any new permits because we haven't been running any classes at the end of the year because I was watching everything that was going on in Russia and the Ukraine. So, uh, that's frustrating. They did a good job though. Really nice cleaned up area. I like it. 
So we're going further out here in the woods. There's an old horse trail that goes up this way and goes out to the sand pits and stuff. But we're going to go camp out where I got base camp set up. That is part of where we actually are permitted out to camp at and we'll run a course out of there. I never really did any training over in that other location except for gathering water because that's an easy access of water point there. Um, because the, the cliff walls, I mean, they're, they're cliffs. They're hard, they're straight up and down. You, you fall in there, you're not getting out, not for a couple miles. So that kind of sucks. I'm gonna have to reevaluate a lot of things. I do know I wanna start branching out with the survival course and offer courses in like Ocala but uh, even that, you got to get permits and stuff like that. It's not like I can just run out there with everybody willy-nilly and, uh, you know, have people out in the woods. So you got to have your insurance, you got to have your permits, you got to have all that. So that was, that sucked, finding that out. Like I said, I ain't been out in this location probably about six months. So we're just going to camp out. Hey. It's my birthday, I'm camping out. Really sucks about the campground being built there now. They did a good job. I've camped there many many times myself, but it wasn't a campground at the time. But it is now. They got a great and everything now. So, keep on walking through the woods here. Come on back here to base camp. There we go. All right, guys, welcome back to Survival Living here. So today is my birthday, and I'm out here camping. Love Florida, great weather. Um, so, yeah, I am 44 years old today. It's awesome. Anyway, I want to take the time right fast, guys, and go over one of our long-term food storage suppliers, and that is for Patriots. This is my meal tonight. It is hearty stroganoff. Love stroganoff. I love pasta. So we got that with us, and also I got some gear I'm replacing gear with. So, if you've been following me for a while, you know I carry these micro burners. These things are great. I screw on a butane propane tank, but the price of fuel is getting ridiculous, and there's quite a bit of stuff to carry along with all your cooking appliances. What we have here is my solo stove, this 16 ounce solo stove. And inside, we have the Starfire from Four Patriots. This thing here, guys. I've shown this before, it comes in a nice little case. Um, it uses twigs to burn, kind of like a little rocket stove. And this thing burns great, burns for a very long time. It builds up coals and things like that, and it works great cooking these things up. The thing I love about these is that if you are trying to keep a low profile while you're camping, you don't have to worry about a big smoke bloom and stuff like that from your campfire because once you get this thing going, it pretty much eliminates any and all smoke. So, this thing is freaking awesome. And what you use to fuel it, twigs. Yeah, guys, I know I'm smoking. I'm actually trying to get my scent out here. Uh, a little while ago, I was texting my son, and behind me, probably about a 45 degree angle behind me there, something crashed. Now, it wasn't something falling onto the ground. It's not like something crashed through brush, but I didn't hear anything as far as footfalls. I got, I'm in a pine forest. You can usually hear things walk. Shortly afterwards, though, about 20 degrees off to my right there, Crows, I mean, massive amounts. I'm going to say hundreds, but it probably wasn't hundreds. Probably like 20 of them. But just raising cane for about 15 minutes. I didn't hear anything walking, but just raising cane. I've also got a photo here. It should be popping up for you. I found that in the vicinity. Um, I took a look at that. At first, I thought it was vomit. You know, something regurgitated because I was thinking a cat. No, when I went to dissect it, uh, there's fur and it smells like pure 
scat. Fresh. Very fresh. So for something to leave something like that and the scrape marks as if it tried to cover it up makes me believe I've got a cat out here. What's really crazy is that all the crows stopped at the exact same time and every sound has stopped. So that is why I am speaking right now because we do have black bear here as well. I don't think that was scat from a black bear. The claw, like it was trying to cover up the scat, is what makes me think a cat. But it has gotten deathly quiet. Before, I was watching a squirrel over there before I was texting my son. And, you know, the squirrel was about 20 yards from me. No big deal. And he was barking. Usually they bark at me when they see me, but he wasn't really paying attention to me. He went up the pines, and he just kept on barking. And that's when I heard that back there. But I didn't hear any footfalls anywhere. So we do have coyotes here. But um, usually coyotes don't mess with you. I mean, a lot of people get scared about coyotes. They really don't mess with you much. I mean, they have to be really hungry, and it'll be a, it'll be a pack. You just stay off the distance from you for a while. Um, I've never had one come to my camp. I've had them close to camp, but never had any issue. I've had bear come in camp. Not down here, but we got bear crossing signs all over this area uh, driving up here. And I do know there is black bear in the area. I have not seen any signs of a black bear since I've been camping out here. And I've been camping out here for, what, three years, two years, three years? Haven't seen anything. But that scratch, I should be, I should have been hopping to the photos for you guys. I took that with my cell phone. Um, well, I'm talking, I'm listening. I hear a squirrel over there barking right now. Just the scrape mark of it tells me cats. I don't like cats. I mean, I'm not talking a house cat. I'm talking, we got we got a good-sized bobcat and stuff. A bobcat I'm not too worried about. Yeah, I do have my machete here. And I do have my actual blade. Um, bobcats I'm not too worried about. My biggest problem was uh, panthers, cougars. There's a reason why they call them Florida panthers. There are Florida panthers. I have not heard of one in this local area in a very long time. Yeah, I know. Should be smoking. It helps release my scent. If it's a lesser predator, usually when they smell man, they get away. If it's a larger predator, he already knows I'm here. And he's not scared of me. So, sometimes fire helps. Fire does run off a lot of stuff. Um, I'm not seeing any movement. I'm, I'm hearing stuff move around. As far as walking through brush, but it's not close enough yet. Don't worry, guys. I don't think it's Bigfoot. The uh, hair-like stuff we found several months back, I don't know, maybe a year ago, uh, it's some type of fungus moss is what it is. I mean, it looks like hair, burns like hair, but it's some type of fungus moss. So it ain't the Sasquatch, people. It's just uh, something large out here. I don't like cats because they just, they're creepy. I mean, they, they sneak up on you. They never come at you broadside. I mean, they always come from behind all the time. And usually you can, I mean, usually I can hear them, especially if they start moving through the uh, salt palmetto that's around here. But I'm not seeing anything around. Let me get the fire going here in a little bit. I was going to wait till it gets a little bit darker. I usually don't run a campfire during the daytime unless I'm cooking. It's just a waste of fuel, to be honest. I just use it at night, warm up a little bit, cook a little bit, stay up a little bit. Then I'll just pile it up, let it burn down, and I'll go to bed. 
So, I just got to finish checking the weather. Uh, temperature is fixing to start dropping. I can feel it right now, which, of course, when the sun drops, it gets cold. Uh, looks like it's going to drop down to uh, 40 degrees tonight. I did bring our heated jacket. That is the Dubu heated jacket we did a review on. It's sitting over there right now. Uh, so, I'll be fine tonight, but... You know, I kind of wish I could have done the hypothermic uh, survival video, but should be a pop-up here for you guys. They turned that into a campsite, and my plans were to dig a large trench, and, uh, and I was going to have an adjacent fireplace on the inside. That way I can lay material across the top, heat it up, as long as you've got a coal bed and everything's sealed, it heats up and it's actually very comfortable. Um, but I had that sand point picked out is where I was gonna do it at. It's up high elevation, it's all sand, it'd been easy to uh, dig out with a uh, stick and everything, but oh well, I wasn't about to tear up the campsite. That'd be kind of a dick move. I, I can't stand it when people go camping and they leave trash, I can't stand that. And if you go to a campsite and start tearing things up, you just ruin it for everybody else. So, this is in the section that I usually run the basic uh, survival course. Like I said, we haven't had a course in about six months. And I was waiting to see what was going on with Russia and uh, Ukraine. I don't know. I've got to check the permits and see if anything's changed since I was last out here. Because, um, you know, getting fines for legal business operation and legal camp and stuff like that is not good. I'm sure it's fine, but i got to talk to him, see what's going on. They used to have a few campsites on this trail. After Hurricane Michael, uh, all that stuff was tore up. I was like the only person that would ever come out here. Very few people ever came out here, and they'd stop as soon as they hit obstacles. Me, I just climb right on through it, go right through the woods. It didn't, it didn't matter to me. And there is a campsite roughly seven miles, well, about six miles from my location. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a nice campsite, but that has a road access. And usually people go out there. But last time I was here, there were some spots that they've been clearing out the underbrush like crazy. And I was, you know, maybe I thought they were just picking up all the dead stuff, you know, all the dead limbs and trees that have fallen. No, they're they're setting up campsites, which is all right. This is a nice, not nice chain to go camping at. It really is. You got the river and everything else. You got some lakes, some ponds down further down, about mm, 16 miles from here. So it's nice. But is what it is, you know. We might do do it out in Akala. I don't know. To be honest with you, um, I enjoy teaching right here on YouTube, showing you what we do. But I want to make sure I immerse myself in the environment. I just not. I'm just not a talking head. I just don't like that crap. To me, anybody talk is cheap. Let's put it that way. Talk is always cheap. To me. Now, if you like watching people that all they do is talk, they awesome. You you do that. Me, if the person's not performing, uh, it doesn't mean nothing to me. All right. I want to see him do stuff. But with everything else, I'm hearing birds come back. Okay, whatever it was, I may have realized I was here and decided to move on. Keep an eye out for tonight. Especially if it's a cat, because the cat would just sit up there and watch it for a while. But I'm not hearing it move around. Alright, so, you know, I'm out here camping, right? And I turn on Netflix. That's how conditioned we are to have background noise and stuff like that constantly going on. But, uh, just ridiculous. I'm hungry again. Did a lot of work today. Got the uh, 
table built, the uh, chair over there, camp and everything. But, brought me some ramens. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. These are those MRE pouches that uh, Wallaby sent us a while back. And we've been getting these for like ramens, um, oatmeal, things like that. They make real easy meals. You know, you just pour hot water in it, seal it back up. It's got the Ziploc on top. Easy meals out here for sure. Mm. This one here is a beef. And I got chicken cooking over here. Yeah, I like ramens. Real quick, easy meal. I put the packet and everything inside of it. O2 is over. Of course, I break these things up. I had somebody ask me a question about do we uh, mylar up the ramens. We do. I did a video. It should be a pop-up there for you. We crush them up, put them in, throw an O2 absorber, and uh, the season pack. But when I make these, I just pour hot water in it, put the uh, season pack directly in, you know, open it up, put it in. Make sure you take out your O2 absorber and just zip lock it. And it's nice having hot ramen. You don't have to worry about washing out anything either. So, these are really cool to have out here on a camping trip. I think they're actually called MRE style Mylar. And they are. You just pour, you know, pick what type of food you want to put in it. Pour your bowl of hot water in it. If you uh, freeze dry your own food, hey, there you go. Those uh, freeze dryers, they're not cheap. Are they worth investment? Yeah, if, I mean, you're talking... 20 year shelf life on your food if you do it yourself mylar it up yeah you can't go wrong i do not have one but we're working with our group see if we can't all come together and get one between everybody working together on it hope we'll be able to get one soon because uh like hamburger meat and all that stuff it'd be great to have all that stuff freeze-dried we have a lot of it frozen, but even that we got to cycle through a lot. You know, uh, we started buying that a while back. Big old, the big tubes of them, freeze that. And having a solar, we're able to keep our deep freezers uh, running. So, a lot of people will sit there and talk about they buy frozen foods and stuff like that but they don't have alternative mean of power to keep that frozen food good you need to get a gasoline generator that's one of the first ones diesel tri gas whatever whatever you can afford for a short short term event you need solar wind power something something with a big battery bank system to run that uh, refrigerator if you plan on putting all your preps there It'd be nice to have a refrigerator or a freezer during an SHTF event. 